Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. You could think of this as part two of my putting nibs into Pen BBS pens, and I'm focusing on the 456, the VAC fill one, because I just like the way it feels. I like the ergonomics. So I've been experimenting, and this is a pen, this the clear one, that I've had some issues with the nib drawing out of silicone grease threads. And then I decided that I would try to put in some Nemocene nibs, because I had some. And also, I, I was uh, encouraged by penultimate Dave, who also puts broad nibs into his pen BBS pens. So here's the Nemocene broad. Here's the regular two-tone that was in this pen to begin with. And here's your regular silver pen. So uh, a few videos ago, you may have seen that I got a parts bag of pen BBS parts, of which there were feeds and nib collars and O-rings and pistons and everything else. And I've found a great use for it. I just put these nibs together and then when I want to change a nib, I just unscrew what's ever in there and screw in what I'm going to put in. And the Nemocene nibs, spoiler alert, work extremely well. So we're going to dive into detail on this little experiment. And hopefully you'll find it interesting and, and maybe encourage you to also experiment with different nibs in your Pen BBS pens. Here's my 456. 16 SF, the clear one. In an earlier video, I tore it all down, put it back together because I didn't think the ink was working well. And as you can see, the ink has worked its way, works its way into these threads. So after a day of sitting, this nib dries out. You wet it a little bit, it writes fine. But, you know, I needed to take this apart and I'm going to clean it and then silicone grease it. I couldn't get this cap off using a regular <clears throat> my regular rubber band grippers so I used these section pliers and literally just a little touch. Once it gets loose it comes out very easily. So I'm going to clean this up, silicone grease it and hopefully that'll stop the nib from drying out. I've cleaned out the ink. Cleaned out relatively easily as I expected. The last time I had ink in the threads, I just put water in here and let it soak for a couple hours and it pulled the ink out. So one of the things that's interesting is this is a solid thick piece of acrylic here. Uh, this ring does come off, so you got to be careful if you do disassemble it. And the other thing I notice is the way this clip is made. Sometimes this is just a folded piece of metal, but this is a nice solid piece of metal here on the clip with a nice little piece here to go over fabric. But, you know, to me, this is where I would call it a weak point, where it's, I think that might be welded. I mean, if it's riveted, that would be great, where they had little knobs there that they spun down. But, you know, when you start getting into doing that type of uh, manufacturing work, it raises the price. But this certainly is a substantial clip. So we're gonna put this whole thing back together again with silicone grease on the threads. So after my work on the 456 clear model, um, it's still, the nib still doesn't hold ink and it dries up and it's always a hard start after letting it set for a day. And that's the only pen BBS pen I've ever had that issue with. We're not getting any ink uh, in the threads of the cap, so that's good. So I decided we need to replace the feed and the nib. So I've had these two Nemocene nibs put aside for putting into a pen BBS pen. As you can see, the plating on this one's kind of worn away. I didn't do anything. It was just that way when I popped it out of the pen. So we have the 0.6 stub. We have the broad. And for comparison, here's a pen BBS nib. So we're going to throw up a shot of showing you the dimensions, which to me are critical when you replace nibs and see how they work. And one of the other things that impact putting a nib is the feed. 
So this is the Pen BBS feed. And what it is, is there's a hard stop right here. And so when you place the nib on the feed, it stops right there. So you're always going to get good alignment. You're going to get good placement. But the challenge you get is the Pen BBS nib is about a millimeter shorter than the Nemocene nib. So you're going to get more of a space between the end of the feed. And like I said, there's that hard stop there. So you really just can't slide the nib further down to try to get it to fit better on the feed. So one thing is nice is because I got the parts. I have a separate feed, a nib assembly or whatever. You have to put the O-rings on it. But So we're just going to unscrew and screw. Sorry. We're going to just unscrew the pen BBS nib from the 456 and I'm going to screw in the broad Nemo scene first. When you put the nib in, the key thing is, is that this whole nib assembly seats well against the top of this collar and the uh, feed piece fits through this little extension which is where the converter would attach to if there was a converter and as we talked about you know I don't think this distance is great but it may or may not impact the way it's going to work so you may ask if the nemocene feed would fit into the pen BBS nib assembly and the answer is no because this feed is not as wide so you don't have a good tight fit as you can see the nib is just really loose in there so that's not an option we need to use the feed from the pen BBS so here's a nemocene singularity and if we look at the way the feed and nib work they're very similar so we shouldn't have an issue with the way that the nib works when it's in a pen BBS pen. I just want to show that even though the uh, Nemocene nib is a millimeter longer than the pen BBS nib in this 456 model there's still plenty of clearance between the end of the nib and the end of the cap. In case you're one of the few out there that are not familiar with the 456 it fits great in the hand I think ergonomically it's close to a perfect pen from my perspective the sections the right size you got enough room to move your fingers around nice little flare out at the end the threads you know they're there but you don't really notice them even though they're metal they're not sharp at all so overall it works great unposted it's a little bit lighter probably okay weight wise but since the cap was on it I got the used to that weight of the cap so a lot of people love these Nemocene nibs they did a fire re-entry even though I've heard Rassie's girl saying that that the coloring is not holding up over time but, you know, I had a few Nemocene singularities, and that's where this nib came out of. I bought the pens basically for less money than the nibs would have cost. But when I put it in this 456, it reached a whole new level. I mean, this ink really works well in this nib. It's just very smooth. You don't hear anything. Not too many nibs I can say that about. And that is a serious line. No real flex. This is a pretty stiff nib. I think Penultimate Dave would really love this nib. 
So hopefully he gets a chance to experiment with it now that he's getting into pen BBS pens. So I'm going to rate this pen now with the new nib in it. I'm going to give it a 9.6. And I'll give it a double check. So this just takes this pen to a whole new level. This pen writes at any angle, writes with and without pressure. It's very comfortable. So I'm just impressed. And it stays wet for a long time. And like I said, this, uh, yeah, this nib is, sorry, this nib. This ink is Alpha Centauri, which is a Nemocene ink. It's great. So, since I have all of these spare parts from Pen BBS, I'm going to assemble another nib assembly with the 0.6, and let's see how that works. I didn't really think that when I got these spare parts from Pen BBS that it would allow me to assemble a bunch of nib assemblies using various number six nibs. So that makes it extremely easy to swap in and out. You don't have to worry about bending fins and pulling nibs. And that's the same distance between the end of the feed that we had on the broad and it wrote extremely well. So let's screw this in and see how it works. I've now put in the uh, 0 0.6 millimeter Nemocene nib. And I'm impressed again. Let's just see how this puts down inks. So this nib is definitely drier than the broad nib. And when I first put this in, I wasn't happy with it because that broad nib was just so impressive. But I've written with this for a couple days now, and, and I like it. It's grown on me. Um, you do still have to make certain that cap is open. As you can see, I'm running a little bit low on ink, so I'm probably going to fill it at the end of this video. But uh, these have been great nib swaps, and I've been very happy with the results. Just show you how this uh, six millimeter stub compares to the broad nib. Sorry about that, they're writing over the camera again. You got to keep that nib aligned properly. There we go, that's better. So on the downstrokes, you're close but no cigar this is probably you know six to seven millimeters and this is probably 0.9 to one maybe 1.1 but your horizontal strokes are definitely going to be thinner because of the nature of the stub so thank you for watching enjoy all your pens enjoy all your nibs enjoy seeing your thoughts on paper with whatever color ink you would like so we've reached the end for now. Until the next time, bye. I like it.